I'd like to talk to you about this open therm system and how it's uh, designed to work with the Energy Zone 4 to maximize the efficiency, not just of the boiler by causing condensing, but to increase the efficiency of the system overall uh, so that you get a, a very, very simple but very comprehensive system in how it actually operates. So um, predominantly we'll be talking about the open term system, but we'll start just to describe how the plumbing is done so that you'll grasp what's going on when we move on to the open term system. So uh, the system itself, as I say, has a radiator circuit, an underflow circuit, and a hot water circuit. The hot water is unique, or not unique, but it's interesting in that uh, you have different options that tend to occur in the job, but we'll go through them. When the pump uh, leaves the manifold, it passes through a non-return valve event, and an, uh, event. The reason for that is we want to have um, the air not come back through the non sorry not the air, but the water that's in the coil when it heats not come back through the non-return valve. And at the same time, we don't want when the cylinder is not to be heated, we don't want drifting heat going over towards the cylinder being potentially lost because you've got a very good uh, incidental. Um, gravity kind of loop potential here that could put heat into the water you might not necessarily want. So the non-return valve prevents that. The most important function it does is that any hot water lodged in the cylinder when it is heated is not allowed to drift back to the pipework and be lost uh, pointlessly, which is a very frequent error you come across in a lot of jobs. So the vent is located at the furthest point and once the air is pushed through the non-return valve and lodges it or, uh, in this area, it's released immediately by the vent. The engine zone so in this scenario is piped in a different usual way. When the flow comes in from the boiler, it hits the centre of a V-shaped baffle, but you'll also see there's a shelf that has been purposely part of uh, the design, and that is to stop any water coming through here, flushing off down and maybe heating a zone, in this instance the underfloor zone, when that zone is not required to be heated. So instead what we're actually doing is we're taking the hot water so coming in, if this pump is drawing Take a figure, 20, 25 litres a minute coming in from the, or whatever number, it doesn't matter, coming in from the boiler. If there's an, if the pump is equal to that, for every litre that comes in, the pump draws it away, puts it through the coil. If the coil is sized correctly, uh, it strips the right delta T across that flow return circuit. And the return water coming back from the cylinder is again introduced into the flow chamber. But if you actually see doesn't mix with the water that's coming from the boiler. It, this water is coming through, through the pipe and drawn up over to the cylinder. The water coming back on the return is fed behind the V-shaped baffle and then flows outside the V-shaped -shape, baffle and it heads across the unit uh, to heat the zones. So uh, let's say it's passing the, it flies back down around this plate if that pump is calling and heats the underfloor in this example. It also can go down if the pump on the radiator is on and it'll draw that, uh, that water down. So that boiler would have any surplus energy that's coming through the, the, um, from the boiler that isn't being taken by the um, hot water. Plus it'll have the delta T reduced water coming back from the cylinder circuit. So there are three scenarios. One is that the boiler and the and the pump for the hot water circuit are correctly sized for a coil and so you have your reduced temperature water come back with your delta t drop from the cylinder um, and that'll work second scenario is where the coil is just not big enough um or sorry where there's a surplus of energy leaving the boiler but the coil is at a designed size to do whatever it's doing if there's any energy left over the two options is that it'll go through the coil and come back out but also any water that hasn't been taken by the pump because it wasn't necessary to set the pump high will divert back on itself and still carry on in feeder zones and the last scenario is the worst one and probably the most frequent one you come across where the cylinder coil is not able to take the power from the boiler and instead of that uh, precious hot water uh, going out the feed zones lose its temperature and reduce the return temperature back to the boiler uh, it, where it, so with a normal system is what I'm saying, it's dumped directly back to the return. Here that water can go back and pa pass the zones and actually lose heat so that when it gets to a temperature sensor that might be fed, some boilers have them, some boilers don't have them. If a boiler has a temperature sensor that you can, uh, for the flow water, this is where you would locate it. The reason is the water has now come in at the right temperature and it has satisfied the, uh, the openings can take whatever it wants and the residual water 
passes down to ensuite back to the boiler. Now the boiler knows three things. It knows that there's surplus water on the flow by the, because it has the sensor. It knows its output temperature because the boilers do that. And it knows its return temperature because boilers can sense the return. So the boiler can get a really, really comprehensive set of figures back to modulate to the correct level. We were here to focus in any case on the wiring. Uh, these wires protruding out are just showing that they would be, it's, the job is in the process of being wired. Zone 1 is, uh, or zone A is being put together. B would be maybe this wiring and C would be this wiring. You don't necessarily have to bring them in, uh, in here because there's holes at the top of the BCB you could bring them next to the zones and whatever. This is just to make it easy to understand. But we're going to move on and look from the very start, power supply. So you come in from your double pole isolated switch, you've got your ERT onto your ERT block here, there's another ERT block at the other side, and you have live and neutral going into your 5 amp mains fuse input. At that stage, you have a live track that travels right along the top of the board, fed from the 5 amp fuse, and so it's supplying power to the four 1 amp fuses that control each of the four zones A, B, C and D. It puts a 3 amp fuse that's giving an, an output for a potential central control whatever you might want to put on a programmer or something and it also has two 3M fuses protecting two separate boiler output power supplies. It also has two switches to switch on the boilers when any zone calls these relays change contact so if you have a boiler wired voltage free contact to here boiler one will fire and in these two terms boiler two would fire. There's a completely separate fuse over here at 3M fuse and that looks after a power supply to these uh, terminals here if one of those goes off out and um, and feeds say to uh, maybe a solid fuel back boiler stat or something and comes back in to the auxiliary input. If power ever arrives at the input of those uh, stats then very simply the auxiliary relays will change contact and supply um, and you can do whatever you want with the voltage free contact switching. So again with the open term boiler we need a live and neutral so we're taking it from here. Boiler 1, live and neutral, brown wire, blue wire for neutral, and it goes off over to the boiler. And then in the meantime, if we're talking about a zone, we're just, I've said that this is a, the first zone is kind of put together, but let's look at what the blocks are doing. If we look at block, there's A, B, and C. C1 is connected directly to that one amp fuse. So I can go off out to a clock, say, if I come back from my clock or programmer, I go into two. 2 on the board is already joined to 3. If that goes out to a cylinder stat or a room stat or whatever I want, when it comes into 4, 4 has 3 jobs that it does. 4 is joined to 7 and 8 because look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. 4, 7 and 8 are joined together. If power comes into 4, it lights the LED, it energizes whatever is connected to any of the other two terminals. For example, in this scenario, it's onto the pump and it also closes the boiler relay. So the four terminal in each block is the one that does all the work. So you can see here in the first scenario we have live going off up to our open term controller through the brown, from the one I fuse through the brown wire. The switch live is coming down into the fourth and the neutral is available in A5 and the neutral for the pump is A6. So now we'll move on to the open term. And in the open term units, we have need for a live, which is coming up on the brown wire from the fuse. It links as well over onto the uh, common of the output relay. And then from the normally open of the output relay, it goes back down to the four terminal. So look, you can see here's the perfect circuit up into the common. When that switch is over, it comes down through the brown or the gray wire and then down onto the four terminal. If you see the open term wiring, that's the one we've decided to program to make this the master uh, unit, which you can select in the software with the open term system, the EPH so, uh, open term system anyway. And that will then send the data, which are actually redundant in the other two units, but when we program this one, we wire our boiler with these two uh, purplish colored wires here. So that boiler will then have a, the open term circuit and the power circuit coming into the unit but also then it goes over with the two wires for the open term simply connect onto the two open term or two open term terminals and then the power supply connects onto where it says live neutral inert from the respective terminals at the wiring center and at the board. The 
LED on the board gives information along with the LEDs on the open term system. If that LED is ever lighting, you know that power has left fuse one and has arrived at, at the um, or terminal one and has arrived at terminal four. So this is telling you the pump should be running in that scenario, or if it's a valve, the valve should have power, and also the that the um, boiler should now be calling if the boiler is wired onto the uh, onto the board directly if it's not using open term. In this scenario, it tells you that the open term system has sent its live down calling for heat, and you know that that particular reg that that particular controller for the open term is working properly. So. Same applies with the open term LEDs. They have a power light to tell you that they're actually energized, which you can see that the board has energy. But if that light is, is not lighting, you know for a fact that the fuse is gone in the zone. So all the fault finding is built in to the complete system. Without tools, you can see straight off what is working, what isn't working, what should be working. Now, um, the open term system saw so, um, communicates with their receivers. Each unit, say for instance here's the hot water unit, it says it's looking for 60 degrees, it gives the time of day and, and date and whatever and it says that it needs hot water just now. It knows that because it has a sensor inside in the domestic hot water for the hot water controller and that sensor can actually go and see and it advises the clock above uh, um, what, what, what status the clock looks at the time settings and then decides to transmit a signal to the open term receiver which in turn turns on the boiler. The domestic hot water sensor as I say um, that you could wear a sensor of course if you didn't use open term from the board directly but in this scenario it just makes perfect sense. So now you can see that they communicate um, outwards to the receive to the transmitters, the programmers, and then they receive the signals back in. So we've gone through it. We have the very unique boiler method that absolutely improves the way the water is being used by the system to maximize the d uh, delta tree drop uh, from both flow to return and the boiler. And because the boiler has by far better input potential. Uh, data input potential it can make much much more accurate decisions so not only is it by far simpler to install it has the added benefit of the one and fuse protection on every zone the LED indication you're telling you what's going on the very simple configuration because every terminal is already pre-identified with being earth or a neutral or, or a permanent live or whatever so a very very simple system hopefully you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it I'd appreciate if you would like and if you know someone who would benefit from this information, share it please on your page. And if you have any questions, whether they're positive or negative, we all learn from people's negative criticism. Uh, well, whatever about ridiculous criticism, but something where someone mightn't understand something, or better still, where someone might have a, a suggestion where it might be improved. I'd be very grateful for your comments. So thank you very, very much. My name is Harry Ray. The company is Energy Awareness. Uh, and the email address and web address of our website with more technical information and more product data is there. If you wish to contact us, please do. And hopefully, um, hopefully you'll have enjoyed it. Thank you.